Hey Wargamers, it's Gregor. So the most recent update for Armored Warfare introduced the first Chinese vehicles to the game. This brings into consideration the addition of more East Asian tech, and I suppose that Zhang's dealer tree would be the most logical place to put this stuff. I considered making separate videos about separate nations worth of tech that could be added to the tree, but I figured it would make more sense to compile it into one script. So the three major contributors to such a tree would probably be Japan, South Korea, and North Korea. All of these nations have a good number of main battle tanks combined, but the nations of the Korean Peninsula do in fact have some SPGs you could throw in. I'll start with Japan, which has the most material of the three. So, background. Being an island nation, even during the Second World War, Japan never had a tank force as extensively developed as its contemporaries. It's always had its navy as its primary military focus. Matters concerning indigenous equipment development became a matter of contention following the fall of Imperial Japan and the legal statutes put into place to prevent Japan from developing a standalone army, instead being given the capacity to create something akin to a national guard. Still, Japan, like its neighbors, has a lot of mountainous terrain and their vehicles are designed to be rugged enough to navigate this terrain and get to where they need to be in a timely manner. Japan has a few interesting designs that you could feature in a main battle tank tree, though. The very beginning of the tree would probably feature vehicles of the Type 61 class. It was sufficient, if unremarkable, armed with a 90mm gun. A small number of these tanks were made to replace the Japanese ground self-defense forces Shermans and Chaffees. It was built from 61 to 75. This machine would probably be a decent fit at the earliest of tiers in armor warfare, around the 1 to 3 range. But the Type 61 was eventually replaced by the Type 74 and it was one of the most widely produced tanks from Japan. Although a bit ironically, it was introduced very late and had to be replaced rather quickly. Still, there were many different versions of the machine made, and it's not a bad design in and of itself. It's built off of the hull of the Leopard 1, and is mounted with a 105mm Royal Ordnance gun. This isn't a particularly bad machine, although it was a bit outdated by the time it was introduced. It acted as a, an effective contemporary to other Cold War tanks, like the AMX-30 and the Leopard 1. It can move pretty quick at about 53 kilometers per hour, and in terms of its armor characteristics, it has a bit more armor than the Leopard 1, but not as much as comparable T-Series tanks like the T-62. I think the implementation of the first version of this vehicle would be a bit awkward. The very first version of the tank could probably function at Tier 3, though that would put into question where you would put the Type 61s. I think it makes sense to create a branch split to give people the option of an upgraded Type 61 or a base Type 74 at Tier 3. There were several versions of the Type 74 made up to 6, but obviously it'd be a little silly to implement 6 of these vehicles tier by tier, cause then it'd be past Tier 8. Details on the upgraded versions of this vehicle are a bit limited, so this is a completely different manner that I'm afraid I can't really comment on. But what I can talk about is what would very likely be a Tier 6, or Tier 7 Japanese main battle tank, and that would be the Type 90 that eventually replaced the 74. And the Type 90, often called the Kayu Maru, is a respectable machine. It's mounted with a German-designed 120mm smoothbore, and is similar to many Western contemporary main battle tanks in several aspects. It's very nimble compared to its counterparts. However, the machine only exists in one version. What would potentially serve as a Tier 8 Japanese main battle tank is the Type 10, which is intended to replace the Type 74 and Type 90s that Japan still has in service. Unlike previous machines, the Type 10 is wholly indigenous to Japan. It's armed with a 120mm smooth bore developed by Japan Steelworks and keeps the same favorable maneuvering characteristics of the Type 90, only weighing about 40 tons in base configuration. Currently, this is the most up-to-date Japanese tank that exists, and there are certainly plans to make more versions of it. I suppose it could work at Tier 8, but that's Unfortunately, where the story of Japanese main battle tanks ends. Now that leaves into consideration whether or not the gaps of this tree could be filled in by machines from other countries. Perhaps you don't need an exclusively Japanese main battle tank branch. I think South Korea could supplement some vehicles for it. And South Korea has an understandably well-developed military with a rather volatile neighbor to its north. So while the country has a rich military culture, it's had to make do with old equipment throughout many stretches of its lifespan, often using modified versions of patent series tanks. But such isn't the case anymore. The country started developing its own armor as the Cold War came to an end, 
and they incorporate many elements of American design. The most well-known of these machines are the K-series of main battle tanks, specifically the first being the K-1. Pretty straightforward. It has a lot in common with the M1 Abrams in terms of looks, but it's equipped with a unique kind of suspension system as well as torsion bars to allow it to navigate Korea's mountainous terrain. There were several versions of the K-1 created, and I think they'd work well to supplement the gaps in the tree. I mentioned these gaps earlier, comprising mostly of Japanese vehicles. Again, it's difficult to go into the nitty-gritty details of these machines and compare them to each of their peers, but I can see the first version of the K-1 as a reasonable Tier 6 or Tier 7 main battle tank, and the upgraded K-1A1 would function well at Tier 8. When you cross over to the most state-of-the-art tech, Tier 9 could feature the K-2 Black Panther, a machine that's being built with the intention of complementing the current K-1s. It sure looks like a powerful machine, very mobile, it's armed with a German ride metal 120mm, and it's equipped with an autoloader similar to that of the one used in the French Leclerc. South Korea also has some SPGs you could potentially feature. There's a Korean version of the M109 that would likely sit at Tier 4, but there's also the matter of the K9 Thunder, a 155mm howitzer that has been in service since the turn of the millennia. The matter of its placement is a bit awkward though, since I can't think of anything that would work for the SPG line at Tier 6. And this machine is fairly modern, it wouldn't really fit at Tier 6. I'd leave that question up to the developers ultimately. I presume there's something out there. And that's South Korea, but what about its perpetually pissed off and angry northern neighbor? It's very difficult to say, because the knowledge that we do have of North Korea's military is very limited and based off of a good deal of speculation. We do know of the Chonmaho, which is essentially their version of the T-62 with a good deal of upgrades in the form of elements like reactive armor, and there are several different versions of the Chonmaho in existence. Again, since North Korea is very mountainous, the vehicle may have had its suspension or engine modified to perform in such an environment, but obviously I can't really confirm that. Keep in mind though that this is apparently their most widely produced main battle tank. T-62s in the modern age. Uh, not exactly the most frightening military force in the world. The only other MBT we know of out of North Korea is the Pakpun Ho. It looks a lot like a Soviet tank and could be a mix mash of other Soviet, Chinese, and North Korean design elements. In any event, a North Korean MBT branch would be a bit weird, to say the least you'd pretty much be digging through Soviet copies, and the amount of tanks that we even know of from North Korea is pretty limited. I'm gonna go out on a whim and say that these vehicles aren't exactly everything that the North Korean foreign ministry makes them out to be. They'd have a very hard time going against the Abrams or the modern T-series tanks. Aside from MBTs, North Korea certainly must have a number of self-propelled guns, but, as far as we know, they're all heavy tubes. And once again, the information on them is very, very limited. North Korean vehicles would probably be an interesting novelty to this tech tree. Perhaps you could add the Pak Pun Ho as a premium vehicle, but I honestly don't see them being anything more than a novelty. Ultimately though, this is a corner of the world that has a rich history in warfare, for better or worse. And I'm sure there are more unique vehicles you can add in like AFVs and light tanks that could act as premiums, but this is what I could find in a short amount of time. Some will complain that we don't need more main battle tanks. And to them, I ask them to find more vehicles of other classes. Sorry, but if you want to be deliberately basing your game off a of modern tech, this is the route you'd end up going down to please everybody. But I'm not a community manager, I'm just a guy making YouTube videos. And that's all there is really to say about East Asian armor. Much of the terrain from the region is mountainous, so lots of fairly mobile main battle tanks, and South Korea could provide a couple of SBGs to mix things up a little bit. That's my current interpretation of how such a thing would work in armor warfare. This has been a rather long video, but I hope all the information was interesting and informative enough. Anyway, if you haven't seen my video on the potential implementation of Israeli main battle tanks, click the link on the screen coming up in a bit. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Good luck out there, Wargamers. I'm Gregor. Thanks so much for watching.